Hello everybody, Cecil Pompous House here. Turns out this spicy 110 chap has got a new bike. Looks okay. Not too bad. Some good modern technology. Very good. The last bike was monstrously powerful. I do hope this isn't any more powerful than the last one. How does one ride such a bike? I'm used to steam power me. Um, I guess we turn this one here. Oh yes, there we go. Oh, you sound angrier than my wife. Well, ex-wife, we all know she's gone, bitch. Well, this is all fine. I don't know what the fuss was all about. Oh, bloody hell. What is this? Who needs this much power? This is ridiculous. This thing's a death trap. Front end, you must have put helium in the front wheel. That's what it is, a stupid idiot. Won't stay on the ground, damn it. Just as well I did not have my pipe in my mouth, otherwise I'm sure I would have dropped it and chipped it once again, but we are not taking that mistake today, no. No more chipped pipes. Look at them crows. English crows, fine crows, but still they should fuck off. Yeah, well, it kind of didn't really work, but okay, it's fine. Well, you might be questioning, where, Cecil? Cecil, where have you been? I have been doing many things around the car, so I'll be honest, I got lost. I was in the West Wing, I went down the East Wing, there was three weeks of not knowing what the fuck was going on. It was a terrible situation. I only had four manservants to eat during this time. Poor little Timmy's legs were delicious though. Like foie gras. That's it, get the kids in work early. In my day, you are born and you are working within the first day. These days they put them through school and edu- Who needs a bloody education? I, I got one, but I'm royalty. Well, you know, we're for royalty. Peasants, they don't need that. You don't need the smarts to be able to clean the shit off the floor. But you do need an education to clean the shit from the ring of the royals. Groomer of the stool, let us not forget my heritage. Slow down! This is England! We do not need such haste. We walk calmly and serenely through the gardens of roses. Remembering our kings that have passed before us and how they managed to sort out their wives in a more sensible head removing manner <laughs> Jesus Why would man need a machine like this? This is ridiculous. I once rode a horse very much like this horse apart from it was more royal Its name was the one that walks on the dew of the grass on the first day of the morn in February it was a fine horse. It was highly strung, that is for sure. And I tell you what, its hooves weren't full of fucking helium. Kept him on the floor. You know, this is the problem with Great Britain and why it's not so great anymore. The kingdom which was once united is no longer united. We gave it all back. Hong Kong was the last straw for me. All those years ago, we went from country to country and sure we did, we held them all out. Those peasants, those ruffians, those uncivilized people in their countries with their spears, we went there and we showed them how things were done properly. And if they didn't like it, well, they shot them. But that's why Britain is great. We never did anything wrong. Britain worked his ass off getting those slaves to do everything for us. And then all of a sudden, we gave it all back. What the hell? Now I have to look after my own house. Maids. Now, don't think we mistreated our servants. We were very good to them. We paid them well. Ish. And if they ever did anything wrong, we taught them a lesson. In proper ways. Scoldings, beatings and such. But they were glad for it. To have learnt the lessons of the fine English gent. You work in my castle. You will obey my rules. I'll tell you a story about young Guinevere. Guinevere was from royalty once, but unfortunately she had a child out of wedlock. A bastard child, you might say. Well, such a child is easily disposed of. But delicious, really. She was put into slavery to learn her a lesson. A lesson she will learn from and work with. Unfortunately, the lesson lasted her entire life, which was only another three years, because we worked it till her fingers bled. And her head fell off. What are you doing, sir? Why would you do the creep? Only cocks do creeps. You've seen them in the morning, as they creep up on a hen ready to pounce in the bum. They do the creep, yeah, yeah, they do the creep. 
My, I know we're in England, but this is mightily slow. Let's see what this old beast has got. Jesus Christ! What the hell is this witchcraft? No man has ever needed to move at such a speed! I have to say that spicy fellow bought one fine steed. It is faster than the fastest horse of the Kingsman. In fact, the messenger, Legless Tom. He was very quick compared to the other messengers, considering he only weighed half as much. It was handy the way that my sword cut his legs off, but I needed my message to get there sooner, for we were running out of tea. Yes, he was bleeding to death, but I said to him, Tom, or now Legless Tom, you need to understand one thing. I, Cecil Pompous Arts the third and three fifths, need my tea. And if I did not get my tea, well, it's not just your fucking legs that are come off. Suddenly he realized I was not messing around. I sent him on his way, 300 miles by horse. Somewhere along that way, he parked at a Tesco's, a local boutique, you know, in them days. Funnily enough, the horse went missing and they had a special on burgers all of a sudden. They said it was just a coincidence, but I'm not so sure. But nonetheless, I got him another horse. Well, I killed a peasant and gave him the horse. And the peasant was thankful for this, and his wife thanked me so. There was some screaming and shouting and crying and something about children starving to death, but my sword soon shut her up too. It's been said before now that I have been a little heartless. So I killed several more peasants and cut their hearts out. Now I've got loads of them. Ah, oh, yes, look at England's fine lands. What's left of them? We should never have given all those countries back. We fought hard for them. Well, other people fought hard for them. I didn't do a lot. I was sitting around drinking tea mostly, but still. And for some strange reason, we had to give them all back. Who said we should have done that, the bloody fools? Costs of tea have gone up. Costs of petrol for these steeds has gone up. Do you know what? We used to run them on peasant blood. Again, try not to be too heartless with the peasants, but you know, there's lots of them. But you might be thinking, this can't be England. It's sunny. Well, trust me, it might be sunny, but it's very cold. My royal quarters are very shrunken. French! Fr French! There is a Frenchman in England! You, sir, are lucky that things have changed. In the past, I would have come across and killed you! A Frenchman in England, driving on our roads, slowly. How dare you, sir? How dare you? Whoa, whoa, what the fuck was that? I mean, I mean, what the fuck was that? Oh, the smell of garlic and onions is ungodly! See, this is what's wrong with England! Years ago, I could have run my sword through this man, and I would have been thanked and given a cup of tea. These days, those fine servants of the Queen would be talking to me about murder or something before it was known as doing them a favour. Like the peasants. What the bloody hell is that all about? Sounds like the War of the Roses going on out my ass. Frenchman on English roads. What's ever next? A German? And I'm talking of nationalities in this country. Do you know that spicy fellow is associating himself with a German? A German! But then we did have a war. And things were agreed on paper like they were supposed to have been done. Not like the fucking Americans. Never-ending wars. You lot, you, Donald Trump, you lot need to stop breeding if you keep creating people like Donald Trump. I mean, his hair is a creature of vile proportions. I'm sure I saw his hair scuffling around my dungeon one day. But now it's on his head. How did he get it? Do you know how? Because he's a fucking American and he takes what he wants. He does not think of others. Not like us. When we took all those countries, when we helped them all out, you know, um, my, this hole's getting bigger, um, you know, we were helping them, we were doing them good, we weren't there just to, to, um, take a mo to, well, we, we, we were doing good, we know this, but to my American fellows, we can agree to disagree like any English gent would. But seriously, don't let that fucknut get in power. 
because if you do, everyone in the world's going to be mighty pissed off with you. Good day, sir. Good day. I don't know why they're not more friendly and accommodating. I am a fine English gent, but that man was cycling while playing with his phone. A mobile telephone. Modern technology and all. In my day, you would strap a message to the leg of a pigeon and you would send it away. Some weeks later, you might meet up with your chappy friend. Go and slay a few peasants, maybe. I mean, um, go and drink some tea. Sir of the car of Focus, of the Shire of Ford. You, sir, are moving at 20 miles an hour. Now, even in my day, that was slow. The number up there on that sign, royally approved by the Queen, says 40. And you doing a number much less than this. How do you think we took over half the world by going slowly? No, we marched from country to country, slaying people, I mean, helping people. Look at this. What a fine flag. Yes. Look, sir. It's England. It's a fine place. And let us not forget it. He's driving a German car, for Christ's sake. Oh, while we're here, did you notice that that fine English gent, that knight of the table, that was without corners, he chopped his hair off. Have you not seen the old time spicy? All the knights had long hair, and it did not get caught in things, and you chopped yours off. Most un-English of you. But we will accept that you do look better without it. Well, you can excuse me, chaps. I just have to pop home for a moment. Like what I've done with the place. Oh yes, I've moved house again. Well, over the second I've moved house, I bought another one. Has a moat. Well, obviously it has a moat. It's an Englishman's place. Everyone has a moat. Look at this. Hundreds of years old. Still standing proud. And listen to the acoustics. English tea! Lovely. Well, here we are. Ugh. Look at that bloody crown on it. So then, my fine English gents, here's a message for you. England is not as great as it once was. We can accept this, but we are still a great country. A great place full of great people who go through hardships, hard times, lose legs and other limbs, and all we need to get us through is a cup of tea and a biscuit. We do not complain. We just get on with it. And that's what makes Britain great. That's how we made ourselves as wonderful as we were once back then. And we also, well, obviously there was taking over other countries, but we won't get into that right now. And it's for that reason that I can stand on top of a cannon in a city surrounded by ancient history that is more than 50 years old, yes, America, and say, we are England. We may be small, but we are mighty. We've also got good balance, apparently. We don't want to fall off this again. So be proud to be English. Yes, America is bigger. Yes, there is more of them. But we're of a higher class. We have heritage and history. I'm going to bid you farewell, my fine English gents, but I will leave you with this. Remember, through the hard times, through the difficult things, we are English. We will always be English. And the tea runs through our veins. We will continue to fight. We will keep that stiff upper lip and we will say, no, I will not go into the night quietly. I will go out fighting. Be proud. Be English. Drink tea. Good day, sir. So I just talked about I why I use it and why, after nearly four years of having one, I, I wanted another one. Not first things first, it's a very, it's very cool looking honest. helmet. And obviously, as yes, I'm an SM rider, it fits in absolutely perfectly no, with what I do. 